Hi guys and welcome to Build It Better. Today we will be assembling the BMW M52 head. Let's get to putting on the rear main seal. First thing you need to put on is this little cover here. And you will have a look on the actual bracket itself. There's a tapered hole. So you'll try and align that with a tapered hole that's on here. And the good news is this should go straight onto those dowel pins on the back of the engine. Um, I prefer the metal ones for this. You can get the material uh, rear main seals or the the paper sort of gasket ones. Um, I just find that the metal ones on a cast iron block I've never had an issue with. Then we've got this nifty little part that comes with the rear main seal. So if you order a Febby or a Victor Reigns, you get that little plastic cover that just slips on like that. You also see my engine stand has been specifically modified to be able to put the rear main seal while the engine is on the engine stand. A lot of um, those standard engine stands with the claws, they will not allow you to do this. You will actually have to take the engine off the engine stand to get the rear main seal on. Um, and uh, my engine mount is predominantly set up for only BMW engines as uh, they're the only engines I rebuild. All my rotaries get uh, sent over to Simon from Promaz and he does all the work for me there. Um, and once you've got that little cover on, you literally just take your rear main seal and you quickly give it a bit of a squeeze and that's it she's on that's simple now we get over to the front timing cover a left hand nut, don't get that mixed up. modification if you're going to go turbo if this camera zooms in on that you'll see a dash 8 fitting on the side of the timing cover now it just requires a little bit of a trim just to make sure that it does not hit your tensioner or your chain guides and tensioner so just a little nip off the corner there and try and put it as high as you can any lower and it'll go directly into the bolt that actually holds the timing tensioner in place you don't want that you just want to come just above it and then just make a little bit of clearance there All right, this thank you goes out to my friend Mike Lake 
So once you've put that bolt on for the oil pump, they do have a habit of rattling loose. Um, and after watching him assemble an engine, he said uh, it's a great idea just to throw a tack on there. So not too much of a weld, but enough to make sure that that bolt doesn't come loose. That bolt comes loose, you blow your engine, and it's see you later, Charlie. Um, so just enough of a tack that worst case scenario, if you do have to take it off again, you can just grind that little tack out and it should hopefully come off. So thanks a lot for that, Mike Lake. So, I have made this mistake before. Make sure you put your chain on before you put your front timing cover on. Otherwise, it can become very tiresome to have to pull the whole thing back apart again, just so you can put that chain in. torqued down, oil pump's been torqued down, chains are on, bolts done, uh, front timing cover has got to be on and rear main seal has got to be on before you even attempt to put the sump on otherwise you pretty much have to try and uh, wedge that front timing cover in and it's an absolute pain in the butt. Um, so let's do it. So here's the M52 head, um, it has just come back from MS Engines, uh, completely been machined. Um, also we did some porting and what we did with the porting is we matched it to the same size as an M50 head, um, so hopefully that'll improve uh, exhaust flow and hopefully spool the turbo up a little quicker. Now main reason why I take it to MS Engines is not only does he shave the head for me but I also remove the valves. And he regrinds the valves and uh, regrinds the valve seats and make sure that's all good. Plus, we also ported the inner side of the valve seats uh, just to widen them up. There's about a one mil lip on there. Um, and to take the valves out and put them back in, I've made a very simple tool. Um, it's pretty much just a piece of steel, it goes on this little push rod, and there's clearances there to allow the valves to come through. Um, and then using the screws that actually hold down the cam caps um, is what we use to screw it down to tension the spring, put the collets in, and then just undo the screws and then put it back in. So I'll hopefully get some time lapse of that um, because it is a very boring um, 
process uh, and it's just very repetitive. Uh, also, um, I would not recommend putting a head in a car without doing the valve stem seals. Once your valves are out, you're regrinding it for the $7 per side that you get these um, valve stem seals from ECS Tuning. You may as well just get them and do it while you're there. Now what I also do is I put a little bit of transmission assembly glue just on the top of the valve there just to help the collets stay there and then if you don't have a proper collet tool I'll show you what I do I get a screwdriver and a, a Phillips head screwdriver and I put the collet right in between the two teeth of the Phillips head screwdriver and that is the perfect angle just like that to slip in the collets you put the first one on rotate it press the other one on and that's it you're done well times that by 24 odd valves and you're done but uh, Again, I'll show you that. Perfect. That's it, move on to the next ones.
So here's just a quick tip. If you're going to be doing anything with valves, and I know you're looking at the head just sitting face down on a bench, but this is actually a foam mat, and it's very, very clean, and it's nice and soft, so if at any stage something does snag or a valve does catch on to um, the little tool I have that's pressing down the springs, you'll be able to feel it, and it's soft, and it won't damage the head. All right, so we're down to the last one. So I'll just give you a quick idea as to what goes on with this tool. So it goes on. Now I'll explain to you why it's in two pieces in a second. So you get one screw on one side. In my experience, if you cut it any shorter, it won't work. get along. Now, why I've got it in two pieces, depending on which screw you tighten, you can adjust where each valve sits in the spring. Yeah, make sure the valves are up. tiniest amount of assembly glue. This stuff will dissolve pretty much on first run of the engine so now here you can get a closer look as to how I get these collets on without a collet tool. Yes there are tools out there um, and probably for the two heads maybe that I'll do a whole year probably not worth me um, purchasing them considering it's this easy with a little screwdriver. My engine assembly machinist, I should call him, because he's not just a mechanic, he's actually a machinist. He tells me all the time, he says, why don't you just leave the head here and I'll put all your valves back in and change all the valve stem seals. And I said, you know what, this is actually one of the jobs which I find very therapeutic, uh, although it may be a little time consuming, just working on the head in a little bit of silence, sort of my little break from the world I guess so that's it collets are in that assembly glue is going to keep them in place That's done. I guess can I get put away now? And this head is ready to get bolted to our block.